uh, let us go through one more example. Here we find the total charge, charge in this uh, volume. Uh, the charge density sigma is given by z squared. It is coulomb per cubic meter. Now, uh, the this is a portion of a cylinder. Therefore, we have to use cylindrical polar coordinates. So, the volume of the infinitesimal element, as we know, as we saw earlier, from this one, right? The volume of the infinitesimal element is this. So, uh, this is what we have here. Now, to find the charge, we need to multiply it by the charge density. The charge density is z squared. So, we multiply this volume by the charge density. So, you will, you will end up with this one. Now, even though we know the charge in the infinitesimal element, uh, to find the total charge we need to integrate. Since there are three variables, uh, it should be definitely a triple integral. And at the same time, we need to figure out the limits. Here you can see uh, rho, rho is uh, the distance on x y plane, the maximum possible distance. It is 2, because the radius is 2. So, rho goes from 0 to 2. And uh, height is said goes from 0 to 2 as well. You can see it here. And now, the angle uh, from uh, the x axis, from the positive direction of x axis, the angle is 5 by 4, 0 to 5 by 4. So, that is how I obtained this one. So, we have the limits of those three variables. Now, the total charge can be obtained by integrating this one in this domain. This is the domain of integration, and we have figured out the limits. Now, uh, let me take that area, the volume as V. So, we in this is the uh, this is what we have as the charge in the infinitesimal element. Now, we integrate it over V, V is the volume. Now, uh, we will assign the respective limits rho varies from 0 to 2, theta varies from 0 to 5 by 4, and z goes from 0 to 2. So, this is what you get. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we introduce a pair of parentheses here, so that we restrict ourselves only to this one. Uh, the variable of integration is rho, therefore, this is the constant, this is exactly the opposite of the partial derivative like so, you keep z squared intact and rho can be integrated like this and the limits are from 0 to 2. Now, uh, when you plug in 2 there, what happens is you get 4 over 2 which is 2. So, you get z sorry 2 z squared. Now, the next time you know your variable of integration is theta. Again, let us put a pair of parentheses just for the sake of simplicity. That is not a must, but you can if you want you can put it like this, so that uh, you can easily see visualize what is going on. Now, you pay your attention to this one, this portion. Now, the variable of integration is theta. So, uh, 2 z square times theta is what you get. As you saw, the limits are from 0 to 5 by 4, right. So, we will plug in those limits. So, here you get 5 by 4 minus 0, hmm, which is uh, 5 by 4 and then uh, these two will go away. So, you have this one. Now, this is a simple integral. Variable is z. When you have z squared, you can write it as z cube over 3. So, that 3 will combine with this 2. So, you get 6. Now, plug in limits. You get 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3 coulombs. That is the total charge in that object. Okay. Thank you.